Hey guys, let's go through how to create a Gmail account. This is gonna be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Nonetheless, I think it's helpful for people who wanna create a new email account for whatever it may be. Let's say you're creating, I don't know, a Google Ads account and you need to associate it with an email. Let's say you're creating a test email for some other property that you're creating online. Or let's say this is your primary email. Regardless, this tutorial will show you how to create a Gmail account and it will be very clear, right? So let's start off. What I'll do is I'll open up an incognito window. So I'll go over to these three dots on the right side of Chrome and I'll click on new incognito window. This allows me to start from scratch, right? So I'll do that. And uh, this is the simplest approach too because nothing will interfere. It's sort of like a blank slate. But let's go ahead and type in gmail.com. Okay. And you see here, if you have a Gmail account, you can just simply sign in with your email or your phone, click next, enter your password, and then you're signed in. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna click on create account. Okay. And here you go. There are a few options for my personal use, for my child, or for work or my business. All right, we're gonna click on for my personal use again for, for the purpose of this video. And what I will do is I will enter my first name. Last name is optional, but I'll put it in because this is a Gmail account for personal use. Put my birthday here. Not the real date. I'm not gonna to reveal too many details to you guys. Plus, I don't want you to know how old I am. So we're gonna put 1920, all right? All right. It could be real, who knows? Let's click next. Okay, it says here, pick a Gmail address or create your own. So it's tried to create one for you. It's added a one at the end of my name just because first name, last name at gmail.com is likely taken in my case. And then it's, you know, added a few other permutations, but in my view, any email account with a random number at the end of it is not the greatest look. So I'm gonna click on create your own Gmail address and I'm just going to play around. Let's see, it says you can use letters, numbers, and periods. How about first name, dot, last name. Okay, it's already taken, so you'll have to figure out what works for you. So if that's already taken, we can try something else. A lot of these are gonna be taken. There are millions of Gmail accounts that are occupied by people. And the first go-to is of course, using their name. Their first name, their last name, or their first name. The Gmail has been around for a long time. So just find something that works. So I'm gonna just type in something here. First name, last name. And I'm gonna write here, um, mm -hmm. Oh, that worked. Okay. So I just used a variation of my last name, C-O-L-A-R-O-S-A. -O now it wants me to create a password. I'm gonna add something there. Should be a strong password. Check this out, guys. I'm just typing it in here. Examples of strong passwords. Okay. 
this is a great chart. Weak passwords, single dictionary words or phrases. A better password, if you're separating words or phrases with numbers or incorporating those in some sort of fashion, let's say you're replacing vowels with, with numbers, this is a better way of doing a password. Let's say you're mixing up uh, uppercase and lowercase letters. Uh, characters like exclamation points or the at symbol, these are very good. And here's a strong password. You can see here, they've kind of, you know, really made it difficult to decipher. So it's it's longer, it's, uh, it has, has uh, uh, more complex characters involved, and they've replaced a lot of the letters with uh, with with numbers, let's say. But you can you can still kind of understand what it is. So from a memorization perspective, it's easy to it's easy to comprehend and uh, and remember. Right. So something like this one is kind of cool, right? So I'll show you. So this one here. Smelly cat. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this is probably not the best. Hold on. Show you. Whoops. I'll show you here, actually. Smelly cat. You've got the S, which is the dollar sign. The M is a regular M. And then... The E is the number three, L-L-Y-C-A-T. So that's a good way where you can remember your password, but also kind of make it difficult to be hacked with a brute force attack. It's gonna take a long time for a computer to be able to find out what kind of password you are using. And again, it's easy for you to remember, but difficult to crack. So I recommend passwords like this. Anyway, let's go back to the topic of this video, which is creating a Gmail account. So I've, I've added my password here and I'm gonna click next. Of course, if you don't remember what you wrote in that box, you can click on show password, right? And it wants you to add a recovery email address. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add my recovery email address here. Again, for the purpose of this video, I don't wanna type my email, so I'm just gonna click on skip. Okay, same goes for a phone number. If you ever forget your password, this is a secondary device where you can reactivate your account. All right, so you'll add your phone number there, and it'll likely send you a text or something like that, where you know you can you can add that as a code on uh, on Gmail, and then get back into your account, and then you can kind of reset your your password. And this is all part of that kind of forgot password mechanism, but adding your phone number verifies that it's in fact you who owns the email account. But like I said, with the recovery email, the add phone number here, I'm just gonna skip this because I don't wanna put my phone number in there. Okay, I'm gonna click next, review my information. Okay, agree to the terms. Gmail is starting up for the first time. Google Workspace. Let's see what the first time startup screen looks like. There it is. So it's giving me a welcome email, I'm sure. Hi, welcome to Google. Your new account comes with access to Google products, apps, and services. Here are a few tips to get started. Yeah, so this is our welcome email, very cool. Here is the email that I created. I can give this out to people and they can email me and I can send email to them. And if I wanna check my email, of course I would just go to mail.google.com or gmail.com and log in with the same information that I used to create this email. So my login will either be my phone number or this particular email and it will be the password that I created, all right? So it'll only be the phone number as another option if you added that phone number as a recovery option. But not for me, because as you saw, I didn't add it there. But um, 
this is super important too. So once you create a Gmail account, you have access to all sorts of different Google services. So this is really nice for a free kind of suite of products. If you click over here, Google Apps, these um, these nine dots over here next to next to this icon. In, in my case, it's an A because my email address or, or my name starts with A. Right? In your case, it'll be a different letter. letter. You can click here and you can see now I have access to all of this stuff. If I want the Microsoft Word equivalent, if I don't have it installed on my computer and I want to just kind of write documents on in my web browser, this is a much faster approach, especially if you have a slower computer. So we click on this Docs button and it brings us into docs.google.com. Or of course you can create a blank document and you can start typing away. Mm -hmm. Very cool. The same goes for spreadsheets. So back to these nine dots over here. Google doesn't call it Excel like Microsoft does. They call it Sheets. You can go into here and create a spreadsheet. You don't have to buy any of this stuff. By virtue of having a Gmail account, you have access to everything that Microsoft Office would have given you. Okay, so this is your spreadsheet. You can access all of these files and different things, documents that you create all by going back to Sheets or back to Docs, right? Docs is the Word equivalent that I showed you first. So for example, if I went back to Docs and I wanted to access the doc that I just wrote, right? That thing that said testing this application, I would click on Docs and there it is. I don't even have to store anything on my computer anymore. Testing this application, there's that thing that I showed you guys. Same goes for creating presentations. It's not called PowerPoint, Google calls it slides. So we can click on that. And we can make a really cool, whoops, cool presentation. Uh, There you go. How do we access it? Let's say I want to bring it back up again, the same way that we did the Word doc. We'll go to Google Apps over here, these nine dots. We'll look for slides. And then over here, we can even name it by going here. Google will automatically name it for you. If you just click in that box, it'll sort of call it the first thing that it sees, like the, the first headline or the first heading that it sees. So in this case, it's a really cool presentation. You can, of course, overwrite that. Call it whatever you want. There it is there. Okay. So this is it. I told you guys I would only show you how to create a Gmail account. But there we are. With Gmail it comes with many different other apps and services from Google. So I thought I would show you those as well. Okay, thanks so much for watching. And any question, drop some comments in the video and I'll answer them. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks.